In this video, I'd like to talk about the parent functions, which can be seen here, and their different transformations. So essentially, what happens to these basic functions when we either add or subtract to the inside or the outside, or otherwise known as the input or the output, and what happens when we multiply towards that output or that input. And adding and subtracting will essentially move these functions around, while multiplication will scale the function. It will essentially stretch it, or it will compress it, depending on what you're multiplying by. So these transformations we'll actually talk about in later videos, but for now I just want to introduce you to all of these parent functions. And in previous videos I have covered the parent functions for most, if not all, of these functions. But in this video, I just want to look at an overview of the different functions. And we can see the basic polynomials. We have the linear, the quadratic, the cubic. We could also have the quartic, which looks like the quadratic. The fifth degree polynomial, which looks just like the cubic. Essentially, it's just skinnier. Same with the quartic compared to the quadratic. And any x raised to some even power will look like the quadratic. The higher the power, the skinnier it will look. And any x raised to an odd power will look like the cubic, where if you increase the power, make the odd power higher and higher, it will essentially make this skinnier and skinnier. Or more accurately, it will make it closer and closer to this y-axis. So those are the polynomials. Then we have the absolute value function, which is very similar to our linear function. Remember, this is just the equation y equals x here. That's the most basic linear function. And when we put the absolute value bars around this, essentially every negative value will become positive. So when we put in, let's say, negative 2, this is essentially asking what the distance negative 2 is from 0, and that is positive 2. So at negative 2, we get a y value of 2. So we end up getting this cone-shaped figure here. And then we go to the reciprocal function. This is just when y is 1 over x, and not pictured here. We can also have the reciprocal squared function, y is 1 over x squared, which will look similar to this, except for negative x values, when you square them, they're positive, so that one will look more like this one. And it will be closer to the different axes here. And just like with the polynomials, when you raise this x and the denominator to either even or odd powers, they'll look just like these two functions here. When you raise x to, let's say, some odd power, it looks like the basic reciprocal function, though the higher the power, the closer it will be to the x and y axis, same for the negatives. And when we raise x to some even power in the denominator, then it will look like the equation y equals 1 over x squared, which essentially will be this curve here combined with this curve here. Though the higher the power, the closer it will be to the x and y axis. That's not a great picture, but you can get the general idea. So those are the reciprocal functions, or otherwise known as the rational functions. And then we move on to the exponential and logarithmic functions. These are inverses of each other. And the exponential function pictured here is y equals e to the x, where e is the base of this exponential function, and e is just the number 2.718 and so on. It's irrational, just like pi. E is the number commonly associated with logarithmic or exponential functions, though its importance is not really seen until you deal with calculus. But this is probably the most important exponential function, so that's why it's graphed here. Though we could also look at the exponential function y is 2 to the x, where we're just looking at different powers of 2. And again, I've covered this in other videos, but essentially you can make a table with any of these where you're plotting the x and y values. You just plug in the most common values, 0, 1, and 2, 
2 to the 0 power is 1, 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared is 4, and then you'd have to look at the negative values as well, minus 1 and minus 2. And remember, negative exponents is just repeated division. So 2 to the minus 1, we divide by 2 once, that's 1 half. 2 to the minus 2, we divide by 2 twice, that's 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. And you can imagine how this curve would fill out. It would look very similar to this. And likewise, looking at this logarithmic function, this is actually the natural log function, but the natural log function, ln of x, is really just log base e of x. And with this function, we would again just make a table like this. And remember, it's just the inverse to the exponential function. And so you'll notice that it's a reflection about the line y equals x. So the exponential function e to the x, if we graphed it on here, would look something like that. It would be a mirror image about this line y equals x here. And it might be easier to look at a different logarithmic function, maybe log base 2 of x, since this is going to be much easier to compute when our base is not some irrational number. You can again make a table here. If you put in 2, then you're asking what power do you raise 2 to, or what power do you raise the base to, to get 2, and you would raise it to the first power. So for instance, log base 2 of 2 is 1, log base 2 of 4, we would raise 2 to the second power to get 4, so this would be equal to 2, and you can graph it like that. So all basic logarithmic functions will look like this, just slightly different. They will go through this key point at 1, 0, just like the exponential functions go through the point 0, 1. And then we come to the root functions. This is the square root function. Notice that it's not defined for negative values since those outputs would be imaginary numbers. And on the xy coordinate plane, we cannot graph those imaginary numbers. There are ways to graph imaginary numbers, but not with the standard xy coordinate plane, which deals with real numbers. So this is the square root of x. We could also look at the cubed root of x, the fourth root of x, the fifth root of x, and so on. But the interesting thing is when you deal with the cubed root function, it can be evaluated for negative numbers. So if we were to extend it, it actually looks something like this. It's actually the inverse of the cubic function. So it's this function rotated and it would actually be reflected. But the cubic function is this basic curve here. And the fourth root function, again, we can't evaluate negative values here. So this would look like the square root function just a little bit closer to the x-axis. And likewise for the fifth root, seventh root, ninth root, and so on. If it's an odd root, it will look similar to the cubic function, but it will be closer to these axes here. So these are the basic functions, not including the trig functions. And understanding how these work, just the most basic parent functions, will give you a great understanding of these functions when they become more complicated. For instance, if we had some polynomial, let's say 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 2, something like this, this is essentially a cubic function that's been transformed. So if we know what a cubic function looks like, we can get a general idea of what this function looks like. And without graphing it or analyzing it, we won't know exactly what it looks like, but it might look something like this, shifted around somewhere on the coordinate plane and maybe scaled a little bit. But understanding the parent functions, again, will help when dealing with more complicated functions. And in this video, I won't talk about how to graph the trig functions. I do have videos on that since it's a bit more complicated. But as you can see, the sine and the cosine are wave functions. They're actually the same function, just shifted pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. And then the tangent function is actually just the ratio of the sine of x over the cosine of x. So it's a ratio of these two functions. And you end up with these asymptotes. It might be kind of hard to see, but you end up with these asymptotes where you would end up with division by zero since we can't actually compute that. So that's a general summary of the parent functions. And like I mentioned, in the next several videos, we're going to look at how to actually transform these functions by
using addition and subtraction or by using multiplication to shift or scale the functions respectively.